Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Sunday, December 11th, 3 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The Kilauea eruption has ended. As predicted, there is no evidence of any active erupting lava on the Big Island. And that's bad news for tourists, but good news for people living on the Big Island. We also have snow forecast for all 50 states by Christmas Eve. And that's the big story, blinding blizzard conditions as the Sierra is pounded by hurricane force winds. Keep calm. It's boom time. Major storm to bring feet of snow and heavy rain, possible tornadoes to the West Coast. And winter storm slams the western U.S., bringing heavy snow to Northern California. And if you come over to Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Twitter, at Diamond the Dave, you can check out the latest snow totals. Seven days approaching six feet at the UC Berkeley Central Snow Lab, 43.5 inches in the last 48 hours. Hours of powers of the global warming goodness. And here we can see 100 mile per hour Sierra wind toss a chairlift in those blizzard conditions. I would not want to be going up the mountain at all. <laughs> That's crazy. Pick a different hobby. Now, we also have a travel snarling blizzard, which is going to unfold across the plains and the Midwest later this week with the possibility for snow in the Philly region. Say it ain't snow. Let's take a look at the last 72 hours snowfall totals. And we've already got four to six feet up here in the Sierras and heavy snow in pockets of Washington State and Oregon as well. Heavy snow moving into Idaho, western Wyoming, and some remnants of that system that moved through a few days ago. This area is going to be blanketed in the deep global warming goodness in just a few days as a powerful storm continues to impact the west before affecting the central and southern U.S. This potent storm continues to dig down the California coast towards the southwest today and produce numerous hazards across the west, including heavy mountain snow, high winds, heavy rain in Southern California, which includes the L.A. and San Diego metro areas. This system will become a multi-day, multi-hazard storm and the central and southern U.S. into early midweek as the snow covers our region by midday tomorrow, Monday, and then Maybe dips down to Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. There we can see the heavy snow and that rain in Southern Cal. And that is the current system. It's going to move to the east through Utah and Arizona, bringing heavy snow to central Arizona. And, well, then it's game on. It's going to bomb out right here sometime on Wednesday. And that's when the blizzard conditions kick into effect. And then following this system, we have record cold lasting all the way through Christmas. A dangerous cold. So before we get to the temperatures, let's take a look at the snowfall totals just through tomorrow afternoon, picking up another few feet of snow in the Sierras here. And you can see the basin and range here in Nevada getting affected pretty significantly. That snow is going to move across Utah and Arizona into Colorado and New Mexico Monday night into Tuesday and then Tuesday night into Wednesday there, Tuesday in the Midwest. Heavy totals dumping up to 28 inches in some areas. As this, this system is going to cover north. South Dakota will get hit the hardest, as well as northern Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and then the east, like a beast, we could see, be seeing some snow in Philly. But on this map, it's showing that Philly is just outside of the major snow, which is going to be happening in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And before the models end, it's showing snow in all 50 states in the Uniteds. Here we are at that dangerous cold. We're talking temperatures that may not get above minus 20 for some areas ever during the day. And this could be Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, the 23rd. So it, the, this cold plume begins the 22nd and the 23rd and then is pervasive Christmas and after Christmas. Look at these temperatures, minus 30 in Montana. And that, that could be with a high of minus 22 or even minus 16 as the high. So we have some severely cold, dangerous cold coming to the U.S. right after Christmas. So bundle up or be prepared, either way. Get extra some extra firewood or extra heaters. Here we are at the European GFS, and you can see that 
well, all those people complaining in the UK, hey, hey, are going to be pretty much everyone's going to be picking up some snow, as well as much of France and Germany, Poland and Belarus, as well as Russia. And then, of course, Norway always gets hammered. So it looks like winter is on in Europe. And here we are looking at the northern hemisphere snow cover. Almost all regions north of 60 now covered in ice and snow and over 80% north of 45 degrees uh, are currently covered in snow. So ho, ho, ho. This morning, which was yesterday, Australia set its coldest ever December temperature ever. I bet you didn't hear that on the mainstream. <laughs> yeah. On the Friday morning, December 9th, the climate station at Perisher Valley touched minus 7. According to the data provided by the warm-mongering Bureau of Meteorology, this ties the lowest temperature ever recorded in Australia in December. And, well, it's a December to remember. And this is tying the temperature set back in Charlotte Pass on the 20th of December, 1999. And even more impressively, equals the continent's lowest ever summer temperature ever. That means ever. Now, here's some interesting news about the Great Lakes. Lake Superior is gaining water in the winter, and this usually doesn't happen. It just gained an astounding six, an astounding six trillion gallons, the same time that Lake Michigan and Huron are losing water, which they should be, because there is a annual cycle on the lakes that they rise in the spring, peak in the summer, and drop off in the winter. But it seems the lakes are rising in the winter, which means that next year will be a flood cycle. If you don't know what that is, then you don't live in the Great Lakes, but certainly the water on the Great Lakes, especially after the snow season, are going to be exceptionally high, mark my words. As a strong six-magnitude earthquake shakes southern Mexico, we've had some interesting rumblers. Now, the good news is there were no immediate reports of damage. So, good news coming there. There's that Mexican rumbler, 6.0, three kilometers west-northwest of El Tiqui, Mexico. We also have uh, a quake popping off shortly after that in Guatemala at 5.2. We also have an interesting quake up here. In Canada, in Nunavut, a 4.2. Who knew? Now you do. So let's take a look at some of the most interesting volcanic activity over the last 24 hours. Lascar Volcano in Chile, blasting to 37,000 feet. This is four miles above the top of the mountain, which sits about 18,346 feet high. Now, explosive activity continued for a short period of time, but that puff is the highest puff of any volcano in several months. If we come over to some details about Lascar, it's the most active volcano in the northern Chilean Andes. This Andesitic to Dacitic stratovolcano contains six overlapping summit calderas, and there have been prominent lava flows descending its northwest flanks. The largest eruption took place 26,500 years ago, and following the eruption of the Tumba Scoria flow 9,000 years ago. In recent times, the largest historical eruption took place back in 1993 at VEI-4 with pyroclastic flows moving 8.5 kilometers northwest of the summit and ashfall in Buenos Aires. So if we look at the eruptive history, you can see it erupted in 2015 at VEI-2, 2013 at VEI-1, 2006 VEI-3, 2005 VEI-3, and that VEI-4 is back here, 1993. So this baby erupts often, so not an unusual event. But probably VEI-2, at least, I would think, based on some of the pictures. And here we can see an image of the 37,000-foot blast mushroom cloud as it emanated above the volcano, which is obviously behind this. So that's pretty spectacular, in my opinion, and quite a volcanic eruption from Lascar. Now, worldwide volcano news update, all is quiet, including Mauna Loa, which has basically stopped erupting. Raventador, Santa Juito to 15,000. Suanosima, Popo, Cotopaxi to 30,000 feet. We've got another big boom just coming on. So there is another large explosion from a volcano. Interesting. Two volcanoes over 30,000 feet in the last 24 hours. As Mauna Loa alert is downgraded, scientists believe Hawaiian volcano may stop erupting soon. Well, I called it yesterday, and today they're saying it may stop erupting, and it already has. So they're a little late to the show. 
As Mauna Loa eruption day 13, a lava pond replaces the fountains at Fisher 13. The Northeast Rift Zone eruption at Mauna Loa may still be active, but that was this morning, and it is not confirmed off because incandescence is now restricted to the cone that formed around Fisher 3. There is no extruding lava, so there is no threat. And this may be, oh, a little bit of activity here that we can see, but it's mostly remnant steam from the cooling fissure. Now, really interesting here, an interactive tool lets you simulate an asteroid impact anywhere on Earth. And so the strange thing is they don't link you to the actual software. So I had to do some digging and find it. It's actually just called Asteroid Launcher. And you can find it at neil.fun backslash asteroid hash launcher. But I will link you below so you don't have to look for it anywhere. So you just pick a place you want to blow up. Let's say my boyhood home. Let's come over here to Philly. And then you pick the size of the asteroid you want. Let's make it uh, a half a mile wide and coming in at, let's say, 90,000 miles, 89,000 miles per hour at a 55 degree angle. And then you just launch the baby. That's it. It's not letting us launch. Oh, you gotta click the spot. Oh, so you click where you want it to hit. I want it to hit downtown Philly, actually. Yeah, and then you launch the asteroid. And boom! Wow. The crater was 2,380 foot deep. 938,000 people were vaporized in the 13-mile-wide crater. The impact was equivalent to 314 gigatons. And we could see the entire city of Philadelphia is gone. All the way out to the suburbs. From Drexel Hill to Southampton. Oh, my. So, if you're bored, learn something. Now, surprising Martian discovery, massive mantle plume is pushing to the surface of Mars. This is after I got attacked three years ago to cl after claiming that there was a volcano erupting on Mars. Everyone said, you're so stupid. Everyone knows Mars is dead. Well, three years later, confirmation. That's surprising, isn't it? Geophysical evidence for an active mantle plume underneath the Elysium Plantia on Mars. Hmm, Mars is active and volcanic. Imagine that. Now, two meteor showers will brighten the December sky, and we're going to tell you how to look, look at these. And we're talking about the Geminids and the Ursids. Now, the annual Geminid meteor shower produces 50 to 100 meteors per hour, and even as many as 120 per hour in peak dark locations. Although this meteor shower started in late November and will last through Christmas Eve this year, the Geminids are expected to be at their best during the evening hours on Tuesday, December 13th. That's just two nights from now. So go out Tuesday night, the morning of Wednesday morning, December 13th, December 14th, and look up. But because the December moon will be about 75% full, it will be tough to see the meteors unless you're in a dark sky area like Pagosa Springs. So that's interesting. And while most meteor showers originate from comets, the Geminids are actually fragments of an asteroid. Now, comets and asteroids are the same thing. It, the only difference is that comets have more charge, and asteroids do not. And that is one of the problems with cosmology. And the asteroid, which is a comet, that the Geminids come from is known as 3200 Phaeton, which is a comet, by the way. Now, the Ursids, the final meteor shower of 2022, will happen uh, from December 17th through December 26th and will likely reach peak during the late night hours of December 22nd. So that's kind of interesting, into the 23rd. Visibility should be good for the 2022 Ursid meteor showers because it falls on the same time as the new moon, which is December 23rd. So we won't have any moonlight getting in the way. Now, Ursid meteor showers usually generate only five to 10 shooting stars per hour, with the highest number in the darkest locations. So get out and look up. And if you live in the Northeast Megalopolis, this could be the worst place in the United States to be in the coming years. So if you can get out, do it now. The overpopulation, the sheer number of humans in this area will deplete the resources instantly in a grid down scenario. And then 
the global unrest in this region, it's Mad Max time. So heed my warnings. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe.